Hey everyone and welcome to Murder by Numbers. In the last episode, we learned that Fran has money trouble and she is getting money from somewhere. We don't know where, she did get a loan from someone and I am assuming that if that, that person is, or that company, is going to be from uh, Kristen. Also, we had an amazing, and I mean amazing, showdown with Ryan and we put him away. So that's good, I guess. <laughs> that was really like, oh, I was on the edge of my seat for that one. Anyway, I really hope and I think that we're going to delve more into the current case right now and find out who killed Oliver. Let's jump right in. And we are here with Roz. So let's talk to Roz. Also, we have the lead here now because Detective Cross put Ryan away. So I guess we're lead detective now all of a sudden. Um, okay. <laughs> now look who it is. Here to get me sent downtown again. Sorry about getting you in trouble. With Cross. It's nothing personal, we just have to examine every possibility. It's fine, darling. It wasn't my first time at a police station and it probably won't be my last. How did it go down there? I ain't a suspect anymore if that's what you're asking. But hell, given my history, I'd probably think I had something to do with it too. Good thing I had an alibi. What do you mean, your history? I ain't hiding the fact that I've been in a lot of scuffles in my time. That's the danger of growing up with five brothers, see? Okay. Hell, if I hadn't learned to st stand my ground, I'd have been trampled into it. I didn't want to be rude, but you did come across as a little... scrappy. I just assumed it was part of the character. Well, it kinda is. I'm just that kind of person. But I get to express it in two different ways with my two jobs. Ooh, you have another job. This gig don't pay enough to make a living, so I also work as a security guard during the day. Did not expect that. Love that for you though. But it's kind of restrictive, you know. You have to act like a tough guy, wear a certain uniform, strike fear into their heart, be all butch and masculine. That sounds, that sounds scary. Do you work in a prison? <laughs> no. Shady Acres Retirement Village. <laughs> What was your alibi? Okay. You mentioned that you had an alibi. Sure, didn't mention it earlier because Fran was around and it's kind of sensitive, but well, this will explain it. Okay, sure. <laughs> this will explain it, alright. You know what it is with this game? Every time I think that something's going to happen and I think like, oh, but that's going to be like case 4 stuff, you know? And then it already happens and I'm like, Okay, so the big reveal was just now, and, and what else is there to come then at this point, you know? It's, it's really like, it throws me curveball. Like, I think that something's going to happen way later in the game, and that it already happened, and I'm like, what now? It's, I really like it though. Yes, there. Just a few more, I think. This and black. Okay, so what is this going to explain, Ross? Are those shoes? Matchbook. Not anywhere near what I thought it was. Alrighty. It's a book of matches. Looks like they're promotional. It says the boiler room on the front. The boiler room? That's not a gay club over in West Hollywood. Not my sort of place. It twinks as far as the eye can see. It twinks as far as the eye can see. It's this place's main competition, actually. That's where I went after I left here last night. Why? I hope it's something kind of innocent like scoping out the competition? I started performing there now and then. No! It's tricky. I love Fran, I do. But I know the writing's on the wall for this place. All of his girls do. Hmm. It's interesting, so... Fran took over the place because all the girls encouraged her to do so, and now they're dropping her like flies. Hmm. I gave Cross this matchbook. He called them up, and they confirmed I was there till a few hours ago. Okay, so that's why she uh, she's no longer at the police station. I get why you wouldn't want to say this around Fran. I'm sure she'd understand, but I don't want to hurt her feelings, you know? 
Well, we should go. We've taken up enough of your time. No skin of my nose. I'll be here if you want to ask me anything else. <laughs> oh, my speech sometimes. Ross, can I ask you something? Sure thing, little guy. What's up? You seem to know a lot about gender. <gasps> oh, really? I did not expect this to happen. People keep referring to me using male pronouns. Does this mean I am a man? Oh boy, that's a big question. Well, you're a robot, right? So I guess you're not really a man or a woman. Maybe folks just call you he because it's easier. Maybe it's because we live in a man's world. <laughs> and that's just the default. But I have male and female interface connectors. Here, let me show you my RS-232 cable. <laughs> Thank you, sorry, offer, but I wouldn't know what to do with them. Listen, Scout. Truth is, this really isn't something you need to worry about too much. You're just you. That's enough for now. I love this so much. This is this is my default response to anyone. Like you're just you, and I'm just me, and whatever you want to call yourself is what I'll call you. You know. It's not that hard. Just keep trucking on. Maybe over time you'll feel more one way or the other. Or maybe you'll feel a bit of both. Or neither. Oh, I, I love this. I really appreciate them putting this in. There's no need to decide now. Just live your life, baby. I think I understand. <laughs> Scout's computing. <laughs> I am Scout! <laughs> I am Scout. Oh, that has so much more meaning now, and I love it. <laughs> That's the spirit. Wow. Thank you, game developers, for putting that in. That was brilliant. That was like a lighthearted but very needed explanation. Wow. I think I'm just going to move somewhere. I don't know where. How about the bar? Oh, yep. Yep, it's those two. Yep, 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 yep. Like I said last night, I expect you to meet the schedule just as we both agreed. But you've seen this place. It's going to take weeks before the insurance pays out. And I need to get the repair started now if we're going to reopen this month. It sounds like a you problem, not a me problem. Not even just a few days. Contracts are contracts, I'm afraid. And I think I've made it clear what'll happen if you're late. I don't think she's providing anything for him. I think she's being blackmailed. Huh. Fine. I'll go get it. I'll be waiting. So, what could Fran possibly have for this man? I. It's probably a situation like, okay, I give you 100 bucks and you have to give me 200 bucks back in like two weeks. So it is profitable for him. I I'm guessing something like that, right? That sounded suspicious. Oh, police. So it is 90% of the stuff we say taken out of context. I'm sure there's a logical explanation. Okay, Casey, I know you love Fran, but... Mm. Oh, we can talk to him. Oh, let's do that. You again? What do you want? What were you and Fran talking about? I overheard you and Fran talking earlier. It sounded pretty intense. Also sounded quite private, I imagine. Well, yeah, but, but nothing. It didn't evolve you then and it doesn't evolve you now. Why are you still here? Why are you hanging around here? B business, as in what I do for a living. And also none of your business. Is there any reason you're being so guarded? You're really getting on my last nerve now. Hmm. Just because other people answer your question doesn't mean I'm going to. Okay, just seems to me like you're hiding something. We're all hiding things, Miss Mitzray. There's not a single person on this planet that isn't keeping secrets. I dare say that as a public figure, yours are particularly valuable. And collateral is a large part of my business. Are you threatening me? Of course not. Why would I have any need to threaten you? I'm merely saying that those that look for skeletons and closets should keep their own affairs in order, lest the investigator become the investigated. 
now if you'll excuse me. So that means he has probably investigated like investigators. Maybe on his dad. I could try this. Uh, I'm not interested in looking at your garbage, thanks. I think we could also investigate. Yes, so let's do that. Oh, there we go. Let's see what's behind this curtain. This one has an interesting pattern. This one is taking quite a bit of time, but it's not like I'm stuck. It just needs a lot of deduction. Okay, getting there. Um, hold up. That one, okay. And this one, and then that one, and then that one. Uh, a torso? A mascot's body. Alrighty then. Ooh, we have leveled up. We are kind of decent now. We're a passing grade. <laughs> Honor, I believe there's something interesting hidden behind the stage curtain. Huh, it's a little statue of a headless sailor? No, not quite sailor. Slightly piratey. It's nautical, but kind of fabulous? It's a drag pirate? I never thought I'd say those words. Oh, that's Maggie. She's the mascot of this place. Maggie McGallan. But wait. What happened to her head? Based on the texture of the neck area, it would appear that this is not a statue of a headless sailor, but rather a statue from which the head has been removed. Why would someone have removed the head? Seems a bit weird to me. Is that... is that it? We are going to move then, I guess? Yeah? <laughs> Uh, I'm a little bit lost. Okay, uh, the entrance. Let's go to the dressing room again. Oh, yes. Fran? Oh, Honor. It's just you. I'm sorry about earlier. I'm just a bit everywhere at the moment. I can imagine. Oh, we can investigate. Let's first talk with Fran. What was that about downstairs? You couldn't help but overhear your discussion with Crispin downstairs. Oh, he's just my um, alcohol supplier. Just an issue with the latest invoices, it's all. It didn't sound like that. Just leave it, please. Okay. I don't think we should present this. I don't know what is that going to cost. Anyway, let's try that. Sorry, the okay. Phew. Uh, the mascot's body. Fran, Fran, I found this downstairs. If it's another flag, yes, you can keep it. No, it's some kind of statue, but the hat's been removed. Oh, that's Maggie, our mascot. She, uh, a, a customer knocked her over, smashed the hat into a million pieces. Should get rid of the poor thing, really. Can we see the pieces? <laughs> I don't know if that's going to be relevant, but it is in our evidence, so I think it's going to be relevant. Anyway, let's investigate a little bit more and then end the episode. I think it's going to be a little bit of a short episode, but we have learned some things, so I'm good with that. Okay. Oh, there we go. Maybe one of these hats is the head from the mascot. Oh, wait. Okay, this is going to sound insane. I just made a connection. What if Maggie McGallan is the murder weapon and not the car oh, that makes a lot of sense okay hold on i need to think about this okay there's a lot of really good distracting music in the background but hear me out i think that oliver was not killed by the hit and run i think he was already dead and the hit and run was a distraction to make it look like he died from the hit and run that's why there were also no skid marks because it was on purpose it needed to look like um he was hit they were not going to break because the hit and run needed to happen in order for the distraction to work. But I think he was actually killed by Maggie McGallan and the hat was smashed into a million pieces. No, no, I know. He was not killed by Maggie McGallan. He was killed by one of the heads with the wigs on them. And that one smashed into pieces. And then everybody would be like, wait, where did that head go? So she took McGallan's head, Maggie McGallan's head, and she put the wig on that and put it on the shelf. 
so that's why Maggie has no head anymore at this point. But Fran is the one that told us this. That Maggie McGallan's head was smashed into a million pieces. So if my theory is correct, Fran is definitely the one who did it. Because Fran's lying. Uh, why do all the why do always the characters that I like the most add up to be the killers? Ah, uh, no! I, it's Kathleen all over again. Anyway, I'm going to do this puzzle and figure out that it is Maggie McGallan's head and then... Yup, let's do that! I am so happy I finally got a theory. Because the theories were not coming. Now I got one. I feel like that's very late, but I'm happy nonetheless. Oh, it's going to break Casey's heart, isn't it? Oh no. Because Casey was like, oh, anything can sound suspicious in the right context. And he was like eagerly trying to defend her. Maybe he kind of knows. Or maybe he fully knows that Fran told him. But I, I don't think that's it. I think he's just like, it might be. Maybe Casey knows who Oliver is and deduced it from there. But it could also just be that, no, I don't want this to be true, so I'm just going to vehemently believe that it isn't true. Oh, uh, poor KC, man! Uh, um, anyway, I just saw that I'm almost done. There you go! Yeah, that's definitely Maggie, isn't it? Mascot's head, yes! Oh no! Well, this, this... Even if my theory isn't true, this definitely proves that Fran did it. Because she said that it's smashed into a million pieces. And it's right there. So... Mm. Honor, I believe I've detected an object of interest inside this box. Oh, I thought it was on the shelf. Okay, okay. <laughs> huh. It's addressed... It's addressed to... Addressed. <laughs> wow. Huh. It's addressed to Fran. But she's already opened it, so I guess a little peek can't hurt, right? <laughs> what kind of logic is that? <laughs> yeah! Yes, it is the shape of a human head. Don't worry, it's not it's not human. <laughs> Jesus cow, why didn't you say something before I opened it? I'm sorry, I was only 68% certain that it was a head. Oh god, it's not real. Looks like it's made of fiberglass or something? Honor, I think it matches the mascot body that we found earlier. Poor oh, Maggie, what did the do poor man do to deserve this? KC will know. And why would somebody send this to Fran? Wait, oh, I thought he just came walking in. Did he see it? Did he confirm that it's Maggie? I'm kind of lost. Okay, I think we're going to leave it at that because uh, that was an in interesting discovery. I finally have a theory and I don't like it. Just like last case, I had a theory and I didn't like it and I was right. <laughs> and I really hope I'm not right this time. But what would motive be is my question. It could be that Oliver told her that Ross was working somewhere else and she just did it in the spur of the moment because she seems that, that kind of lady to just do things in the spur of the moment. Um, it, it could also be that Oliver threatened her because Oliver was quite drunk and he threatened for money that she didn't have. Um, Maybe it happened in here, and that's why the papers are all over the floor. Because uh, she must have wiped it up, of course, but... I think it's going to be Fran. I think the entire charade that she's messy... I don't think she's messy. Look at her updo. She's not messy. I don't like it, but I'm pretty sure it's Fran now. I don't know how exactly and what the motive and everything, but I feel like she's going to be the culprit. Whether it was accidental or not, we shall see, but I think that he was already dead and the hit and run was a way of distraction. So if it was an accident, the killing, I mean, that still means she she covered it up she she did something to the body after that so that's that's no bueno for her um wow interesting oh 
so good so good i love this game so much and i'm finally i'm glad that this case is finally progressing and we're getting theories yes <laughs> i love it and we will continue theorizing in the next episode thank you so much for watching do we do